Okay, we, we back at Success After Lockdowns podcast um, through Exodus Productions. I'm going to get right into this uh, uh, finishing up. We're talking to Brother Mentor. You know, um, we, we did a lot of time together. We, we actually grew up together in our youth, you know, and uh, I think it's important to hear his story and, you know, and hear his side of things because he's the actual um, success. success after lockdown. So, so like, I just want you to tell me, like, why was you in there? Why mm-hmm. was you in that place? You know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah. and, you know, and growing up in that place and your transition in that place. Just give me those. And uh, how much time did you do? Did you actually do, man, before your uh, release? Yeah, so two weeks before my 18th birthday, I was arrested um, and subsequently charged and convicted for murder in the second degree. You know, one of the worst things I ever did in my life, you know, um, and I um, was sentenced, as I mentioned, to 25 years in prison. Um, so two weeks before my 18th birthday, you know, I was locked up and not even see the street till I was um, 43. You know, so I did 25 years. Um, you know, more than uh, more more time in prison than I had lived. You know, lived in the streets at the time. You know, I was fortunate to be released uh, nearly five years ago, August 21st. Um, to, to 2017, and um, you know, yeah, so congratulations on that. Yeah, you know, it's cool to be, still be out here at home. You know, to be out here at home and doing what you're doing. I'm gonna let you go ahead and tell us that because I'm, I'm intrigued right now. Yeah, you know, um, at one point in my life, I always say, man, you know, I, you know, I spoke about drugs, guns, you know, a bunch of bull. You know what I mean? I did, you know, streets. You know what I mean? But today, I'm a college graduate. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I was fortunate enough to go in, you know, while I was locked up at Sing Sing Correction Facility um, to pursue my master's degree. Uh, first, obviously, my GED because I was a high school mm-hmm. dropout. Right. You know right. what I mean? Like most individuals who go into the system as a high school dropout, you know, but I figured some stuff out. You know, I figured that, you know, I was a fuck up. You know, I don't know if I can say that on, on yeah. the podcast. You know what I mean? Say but I was you a fuck say. up. You know, I was a fuck <laughs> up. Let's, you know, be honest with you. Yeah. And, but I figured some things out, though. You know what I mean? I figured I was good at fucking up my life Mm -hmm. but I also figured out that I could be good at rebuilding my life you know I mean once I figured that out you know I use education as a way for me to um to rebuild my life how I was thinking some of the choices that I was making and um I was fortunate to get my GED um Mm -hmm. and from there I realized what could I do to position myself to have an opportunity whenever I was released you know what I mean? And I realized that one of the things that I could do is pursue education. You know what I mean? And I was fortunate enough to be in Sing Sing. I got my bachelor's degree um, from Mercy College. Um, and, and big up to Hudson Link, because that was the, the not-for-profit organization yes. that yes. gave us the opportunity Absolutely. to do it. Absolutely. So I always yes. got a big up for Hudson Link for higher education in prison and all of the, you know, the forerunners, the, the men and women who sacrificed to make that possible. And I, you know, would go on to get my master's degree in urban ministry from New York Theological Seminary. So for me, education was foundational. It gave me an opportunity, you know, um, to have an opportunity to be here today. But I would also say it saved my life. Mm. Literally. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Education literally saved my life. Let me ask you a quick question. While you was in there, when you got your 25, and did you go in there with the same mentality? Like, let me get my education, let me get my GED. Did you see hope? First of all, when you got sentenced, did you see some hope in, in, in the course of that time that you had to do before even going to see a parole board? Well, you know, the interesting thing, you start off with 25 to life, you, <laughs> only thing you're thinking about is the next day. Mm-hmm. You're thinking about how the fuck are you going to survive? You're thinking mm-hmm. about how the hell are you gonna get out of prison? That's the only thing, survival and getting out. That's all you're and thinking about. And how you gonna live, to and how you gonna live too, yeah. right? And how you gonna live is you gonna get it out the dirt. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. You gonna do the same thing. You don't go into prison. I didn't go into prison thinking that I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna do the same thing because that's all I knew. Right. I'm gonna do what I knew from the streets. And you know, that was crime, whether it was selling drugs or whether whatever was hustling, you know what I mean? Right. And I did that for years and part of it was that I just could not figure it out. You know what I mean? I, I didn't have the hope that you talk about. I didn't have the hope of being anything different. Right. You know and, what I mean? And, and I'm gonna tell you why I asked you that question. 
The reason why I asked you that question, because me and Eric was having a conversation not too long ago about re-entry you should start the day that you go in. A lot of brothers kind of, you know, wait for that last minute and expect mm-hmm. them change. Um, and regardless of whatever that transitional time is for, for every individual, we just want to put it out there. The sooner you start it, no, the no better, you know what I mean, yeah, that you no can doubt. get ahead. No doubt like you brothers were a lot fortunate because you found that education, one, by your time, you know, to get through the days faster. Two, it helped you find who you are, your true voice, your true being. Three, that it allowed you to see some hope to coming home, mm-hmm. right, and doing something with that ed- education. You know what I mean? That's why I asked that question. So go ahead. Yeah, no, no, no doubt. No, I mean, I, I believe that your, uh, your, whatever you're doing, I think the sooner you do it, right, mm-hmm. the sooner you start preparing the better because, I mean, we're not like light switch where you flick the, the switch and then, you know, the light comes on and you change and you start. You have to start preparing from the moment you enter. You know what I mean? Whatever that, that preparation looks like, but it has to start from the mm-hmm. moment you, you enter. And for me, you know, it took me a while to really figure it out. You know what I mean? And again, it started when, you know, I was in Sing Sing, you know, for the most part, right. where I had opportunity to do programs like Liz Gaines talked about from the Osborne Association, you know, being a child care, um, whatever they call it today, child, child care, care worker yeah. or manager yeah. in the children's yeah. center or the family, family center, center, the family center. center, having an opportunity to work in there and learn how to be a professional, learn how to be a father, mm-hmm. learn how to connect and relate to people, you know what I mean? And then, you know, just from that, it gave me a sense of confidence that I could be a professional, I could figure some stuff out other than just crying, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So, you know what I mean, that was, those those were those moments where I was able to look and say, you know what, if I continue to do this, maybe, just maybe, there is life, a life after prison for me, you know what I mean? Absolutely. And so, you know, you know, and I find myself here today because I, at some point, I realized that I could be here, right. you know? And, and that's good. And so I know that you came home, you know, August is going to mark five years. You've been home, you came home, you started working with the Oz One, is that correct? Yeah, well, when I first came home five and a half years ago, I, I started with one of the local organizations in Buffalo, because that's where I'm from, Buffalo, right. New York. Okay. Born and raised. Um, and so I worked at an organization, a local organization, which, interestingly, it was called Buffalo Federation of Neighborhood Centers. It's been around forever in Buffalo, okay. right? And I actually went to school there. Mm. My grandmother worked there. My mother worked there. Wow. We called it the Nave, the neighborhood house. Right. And I actually, went, coming full circle, went and started working there, doing some case management mm. and doing some um, health education. So that <laughs> they gave me my first opportunity. I was three months home from prison then. They gave me my first opportunity. I was making like $35,000 a year, right? And I was like, man, this is some money. Because I ain't never made <laughs> no money like this. You know what I mean? Better than that one. That, that, that yeah, was better than like, you know, So I was happy about that, right? right? And then Liz came knocking on the door. They wanted to build a Family Works Buffalo site here in, in, you know, in Buffalo. And she tapped me. You know, I interviewed successfully successfully there and we helped you know develop the foundation myself and another person developed the foundation for um, what is now today a thriving program in Buffalo called Family Works Buffalo which focuses on video visitation for people who have loved ones incarcerated children can come to um, the site and do video visitation Um, and also we were able to develop a program which work in the community with children and families who are impacted by having a loved one incarcerated. So that, you know, was my second, you know, a major opportunity in terms of, um, you know, um, employment, you know, in the career. You know? I, mean, I would say that's, 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 you know, not to get religious, but that's kind of a God thing right there. You know what I mean? So what are you doing today? Tell me what you're doing today. Yeah, so, I mean, <laughs> I'm a father, you know, full time, yeah, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, a right. father. Yeah. You know, I talk about my wife. She's there. You know, I'm blessed to have my wife, you know, who, uh, so I'm, you know, married. Um, and I'm a homeowner. 
You know, I mean, oh, we talk about home I, ownership. Yes. You know, my wife and I were successful at, um, you know, purchasing a home last year. Congratulations. You know what I mean? Major. Um, you know, something I always envisioned, like having a home, That's being right. an owner. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Building equity, you know yes. what I mean? And and building, you know, um, the beginning of wealth. So, uh, you know, f on a personal level, that's that's what I do. And that's all full time. But, on you know, professionally, I work um, for an organization called CAI, Chickatelli Associates. Um, you know, it's a great organization. I do public health work. Um, most of it is it's it's it's, it's work that focuses on policy how can we improve the health outcomes of communities mm. right communities that you know where i come from that have been directly impacted by a number of disparities and one of the disparities that our community where i'm from is 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 tobacco related causes you know what i mean like almost forty five thousand black people die a year from tobacco related causes mm. you know what i mean and so my work involves working with communities to create the sort of environment mm -hmm. that can counter that right, right there and that involves me um, working with elected officials you know to develop smoke-free parks smoke-free beaches you know working with uh, property owners or property managers to create smoke-free housing you know um, and, and I should say children um, black and brown children experience secondhand smoke unlike any other community right you know what I mean? And that impacts the health and wellness, you know, and the longevity of these children. So Absolutely. we work with housing complexes to create policies that, you know, um, that are smoke free so people can have not only affordable housing, but healthy housing options. You know what I mean? And yeah. I also, you know, so my work involves policy to, um, work on a population level that, again, that creates um, this sort of environment that is, you know, that promotes health and wellness. And I definitely appreciate, you know, that. You know, you're one of the brothers that got it, you know, um, in, in this transition, you know, and I know, you know, I know you have greater things, you know, to come, yeah, you know, definitely. for your future, man. And I Still figuring it out, though. It's, no a, it's a process, though. Yeah, that you know it is. I mean? that I appreciate that is, that you still coming down, the process, man, and, and man. spending time No, I definitely us. wanted to be here, I you know what I mean? that. You're coming program. all the way from Buffalo, Yeah, man. I <laughs> so, had to, man. You know. You know I'm honored. You know, <laughs> you know yeah. No, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate <laughs> the offer, and then I know I wanted to be a part of what I think is a great opportunity for, you know, for men and women coming home. And I definitely look forward to, you know, um, working with you in the future, man. Yeah, definitely. With let's success go. after lockdown, yeah, man. man. <laughs> I got out, a lot man. of a lot Reach of out. big vision in mind with this project. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. You know, we definitely gonna see it forward. So we um we're gonna close this one out. Yes. And uh listen, I meant to, you know, keep doing what you're doing. My man. pleasure, man. Definitely. Stay focused, yeah. man. I already know I don't even have to tell you that, you know. Yeah, <laughs> man, I appreciate you know, it, man. And I love and you. It's man. good to see no you. Like you too, same bro. Here. Yeah. All right. All right.